Hello everyone and welcome back to week 4's 2020 Ruby on Rails challenge. Uh, this is part 4, which should hopefully be the final part. Uh, this is just going to cover some basic styling of the application to make it look a little bit not as bad. Uh, this isn't going to be professional styling because as I've said before on the channel, I am very much a uh, back-end designer. I am not a front-end person. I do not have those talents. I wish I did. I'm working on it. Uh, you'll see me explain a little bit about my process for how I pick the colors for the application. Uh, but looking at it right now, it's not great. So uh, please bear with me. I hope this can at least serve to be a little educational uh, and that someone gets some value out of this. But if you're looking for actual uh, styling guidance, I would say go over to someone like McKinsey Child uh, rather than myself. But uh, that's going to do it for this intro. Let's go ahead and let's jump into some code. Oh, before I forget, we're also going to like cover fixing up some of the uh, form stuff and also like autocomplete, uh, turning that off in the form. So yeah, we're also going to do that. Now let's go to the code. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do up in the header is we're going to create a, uh, a link with a rel equal to style sheet. And we're going to give this a type equal to text slash CSS and an href equal to application dot CSS. We'll then do a slash and an angle bracket to close this off, and then we'll create this CSS file over here. So we'll call this application.css, and this is where we're going to be handling all of our um, styling. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we'll grab the uh, HTML, and we're going to set a background color, oops, background color of 487C84. Uh, and the next thing we're going to do is uh, we need to do like a font family. So let's go ahead and uh, I kind of want to use Source Sans Pro. So I'm going to do a Google search for oh, right here, Source Sans Pro for Google font. I'll click on the Google fonts link and I'll full screen this so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to grab this regular. Uh, I guess I'll remove the style so that everything looks normal. Let me just refresh to make sure it looks okay. I'll come into the regular 400, I'll uh, click select this style, um, and then after that's done, I'll come over to the embed, and I'll grab, uh, I guess, the link for it. So let's uh, grab the link and come into our uh, index.html, oops, yeah, index.html. Uh, thought for a second I got my Ruby and my HTML mixed up. So we'll paste this into the header, and then we can save that. And then we just need to add in the uh, CSS rules inside of our application.css. We can do it by just saying font family and then inside quotes, uh, source sans pro, comma, sans serif. So we can save this. And then if we come over to our application and refresh, hopefully we'll see the uh, font change, which it did. The background also changed, so that's good. Uh, next, let's come into our index html and around basically everything inside of the body we're just going to create a div with a class equal to wrapper so we're going to do this and then we'll uh, move this wrapper all the way down to the bottom below the container and above the closing body tag refresh and nothing will change but the reason why we did that wasn't to make things change right now it's so that we have something to uh, sort of center everything so if we click, oops, I just deleted something. Uh, if we click on the actual application, you can see here how everything is centered in the middle. That's why we're using this wrapper in uh, this version of the app. So now that we have that wrapper, let's come over to our application.css and below the HTML, we'll do a dot wrapper to grab the wrapper class and we'll just say text align center. And then we'll save this, refresh the page and now everything is sort of aligned in the center. The next thing we need to do is create a title class. So we'll say display is going to be inline block. And the color is going to be uh, D9FAFF. And if you're wondering how I came up with all these colors, there's a couple different tools you can use for um, creating a theme. So the first one you could use, I think it's like coolers.co. So C-O-O-L-O-R-S.co. So I'll just zoom in to like 150%. If you click start the generator, uh, it'll give you an option to basically randomize five colors that should match to a specific theme. And then let's say you really like the purples, but you um, you don't like the grays or something. You can hit space and it'll generate a couple other colors that sort of like match the aesthetic. And then you can just paste them from here. 
Uh, the alternative is this um, color from uh, Adobe. So it's color.adobe.com slash create. And this is a similar tool, but it's slightly more advanced where you can choose your uh, color harmony rule. So like, let's say we want monochromatic and you want something blue. It'll give you five blues. It also gives you like a triad and complementary colors and double split complementary. So it's like a whole bunch of really cool stuff that you can use here and you can tweak to your heart's content. So either of those tools will work. They're both free as far as I know. Uh, so I would just take a look at either and see if, you know, you can use those in a future project or maybe just tweak the colors for this project. But that's sort of how I came up with this. I just, um, I mess around with it until I see something that looks okay. Uh, I'm not, I'm of course not like an expert when it comes to styling. Um, but let's save this and refresh the page and you'll see that the title didn't change its color. And the reason for that is we need to give, uh, instead of this text align center for the style, let's switch this to be a class equal to title. And let's change this home page text to uh, to do stream. And then let's change the title up here to to do stream as well. So I'll change this title up here as well as this and you can see the color here changed. So that's pretty neat. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to style uh, the to do underscore form. And for this, we'll say this is a text align center as well as a font size zero. And actually, let me let me leave off this font size zero for a second. Uh, so if I hit F12 and I scroll in a bit and I just deleted another element, if you hover over both of these, you can see padding and margins. So margin will be orange and padding will be green. So you can see right here that around the submit inside the button, there's a little bit of green padding. Um, and you'll also see some orange if there's margins. But this space right here isn't because of paddings or margins. I think it's because you're displaying in uh, like the, the way you're displaying on the screen. It's using a font space right here. So the size of a font space is what's causing this gap. So I imagine if I were to change this to like 80 pixels, this gap would get a little bit bigger. Yeah, so I think that's what's happening here and that's why the fix is just to set the font size to be zero pixels for that gap. But that does mean that when we have another font size inside of this uh, form, so like for our inputs, we'll want to change uh, that font size manually. So the next thing we'll have is a text input. And I don't remember if we actually have this class in here. So if we come over to our input, this has an ID, so we could probably just grab the ID, but the submit button does need a class of, uh, let's just call this like um, task submit maybe. So we'll come in here and we'll say, we have the text input, but this is, um, we have the ID, right? So it's a task input. And then for the task input, we have display inline block. It has a background color of 8CF0FF. It has a padding of 1EM, a font hyphen size of 24 pixels, and a border of none. So now if I come in here and I refresh, that has massively shot up in size uh, because this is scrolled in considerably. If we come out to 100%, it just looks a little bit uh, better, I guess. So that's our task input. Uh, the next thing we want is to change it when we hover over it. So for this, we can do task underscore input colon hover. And when we hover over it, we'll say the background hyphen color should be C8F8FF. So now if we refresh and hover over this, you'll see that the color changes a little bit. And then we can do a task underscore input colon uh, focus, focus. And when it's focused, we'll just set the background color to be FFF, which is white. So now you hover over it, it turns a little white and then you click it and then it turns fully white. Uh, so the next thing we have is this, what did we call it? the uh, task submit button. So we'll say, oops, dot task submit. 
So the first one here is display inline block. It also has a padding of 1EM, a font hyphen size of 24 pixels, a margin of zero, a background hyphen color of uh, 003CFFB2. And these last two right here are for the opacity. I don't know if I've mentioned that yet. Uh, then we have a color of FFF and a border of none. So now if I save this, this button now matches the input. Uh, so the next thing we wanna do is when we have a uh, dot task submit colon hover, we'll change the opacity a little bit. So we'll say the background background color should now be 003CFF and we'll change it to D7. And then the last one we can do here is a task underscore submit for the focus. So when we focus it, uh, we'll change the background hyphen color to just be 003CFF. So now if we refresh and we like um, add another task and then we hover over it, it'll you can see it just subtly changing here if I zoom in. And then when you click it, uh, nothing happens because there is actually no focus for this button. So there is a focus. It's just very subtle. So you might want to change this to, I don't know. If, I imagine if you made this black and refreshed. Yeah, so there you can see that there is a focus. Okay. Tired brain zero. Um, previous programmy brain one, I guess. So the next thing we'll do is we'll say for the container, let's give it a padding of 1 EM a width of 750 pixels. And you could of course make this responsive if you wanted to using uh, media queries, uh, but we're not covering that in this video. Uh, it's always a challenge of figuring out what stays and what doesn't make the cut. So let's grab the uh, task class, which is in our application.js when we create these responses. We have this div and we're giving this div a class of task. So if I click on one of these, uh, these have a class of task and an ID equal to the ID of the element or of the um, model in the database that we're referencing. But we're using this task class here. So we're going to come over here and style these individual tasks. So for the uh, just regular task on the screen, we'll give it a padding of 1EM, a margin of 1EM. So we'll just save this real quick. You can see that already changed how things look here. Uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll give them a font hyphen size of 24 pixels. And then you can see it changed again. Then we'll give it a background hyphen color of 8CF0FF. So now if I refresh, you have these cool uh, background colors. And then we'll give it a border radius of 10 pixels, which should round the border a little bit right here. Yeah, so there's your little rounded border. Now let's get rid of this ugly border we have going on right here. Uh, there's some inline styling here that needs to be moved. So let's get rid of this stuff. I think that should clean it up. So if I save this and then refresh, it looks a little bit better. Uh, and then let's finally give this the on hover effect. And we'll say dot task hover. So if you're hovering over it, change the background color and this one is RGBA for some reason. Uh, you could also do this in hex. I don't know why I didn't do this one in hex, uh, but we're gonna set it to 245, 134, 134, and then the uh, opacity is gonna be 0.65. The color will be white. So if I just refresh, we've changed the background color and uh, the actual font color changes when you hover over it. Now we want to give this a transition timer. So we'll set this to be uh, 0.5S. So now when you hover over it, it won't be an instant transition. It'll be like a gradual change. Uh, and now the last thing we should do is change the cursor to be a pointer so that when you hover over this, it doesn't give you just the default cursor anymore. It'll now change it to the pointy hand or whatever you wanna call it. So now let's get rid of this example text inside of the submit form real quick. Uh, and we can do that by coming over to our form and where we have this value, we can just leave this blank. So it's blank now. 
And uh, I think the last thing we can do, because I'm noticing there's this uh, autocomplete here. Let's come into our input and I think we can change this to be autocomplete equals off. And that might change this. So let me do that. Did that work? Oh, the autocomplete might need to go on the form and not on the input. So let's try that. Now let me save this and then we'll refresh. Yeah, so there's uh, no more autocomplete. There we go. And then we can just delete some of these and you could also do your validations uh, and all that other stuff. But I feel like this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good application for uh, what it is. You know, we learned how to use an API. We also made that API. Productive week overall. Oops, overall. Cool. So uh, yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this little API tutorial. Um, if you guys are curious, uh, next week we are going to be covering basically the same thing, but we're going to be doing it with React. Uh, because I was working on a React application and I got a little annoyed with how cumbersome it was to do everything, so I thought I would use an API for it. But I thought this would be a good intro primer. Uh, so if you're looking for this same type of project but done in React as like a front end, uh, that's coming hopefully this next week. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, that's going to do it for me, though. I will see you guys in the outro video. Okay, so that's going to do it for week four's 20 and 20 project. I can't believe we've already gone through about a month of these. Uh, week five is going to cover React. Barring any sort of unforeseen circumstances, it should be smooth. It's going to be basically the same setup. We're just using React for it. So we're going to get a little bit more involved in how you use React for like state. Uh, and a whole bunch of front end goodness there. And you'll sort of see why, uh, you know, React makes some things easier than other things. Uh, so hopefully that'll be like a good comparison. And then maybe we can cover something like Vue in the future. Uh, but first I have to learn it. So, you know, we'll see. Give me a week or two and we'll see what I can pull out. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for me. If this video helped, remember to like it. If this video didn't help, then remember to dislike it so that we don't subject other people to it because we have enough bad videos at the top of the YouTube search results. Sorry about that. I hit my table. Uh, yeah, so that's going to do it for me. I will see you in week five. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.